You know, Giovanni, I thought that I had her. But I was so close to uncovering Amber's secret. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, Kimberly. I know how much this meant to you. Rick is the one that you should feel sorry for, not me. The man has made his own decision. A decision that was based on a lie. Kimberly, listen to me. I understand you're hurt and frustrated. But if Rick has made up his mind, if he wants to remain married, you must find a way to accept that. I can't. No, I will not do that, Giovanni. You know, it would be different if Rick knew the truth, but he doesn't. And I'm not going to give up until he does. So what happened, Rick? What did you tell Kimberly? I told her it's over. It's over? Finished. She and my mother aren't gonna bother us anymore. So, so you told her to leave me alone? I asked her to do the right thing. For us, for little Eric, and for herself. And that is? To accept our marriage and move on with her life. Staying. <laughs> yes, Amber, I'm staying. This is where I belong. Rick, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, tell me exactly what happened. What always happens when I talk to your family, I get blasted. I mean, I can't even believe that I trusted that woman. I don't get it. I thought she was on our side. Well, yeah, I thought so, too. That's what makes me so angry. I opened myself up to her, and I took her advice, and then she gives me a lecture on abnormal psychology. Yeah, well, Taylor's wrong about us, Brooke. Our feelings for one another are real. That's right. They're the ones who are delusional. Ridge, Eric, Taylor. And they're kidding themselves if they think breaking us up is going to solve Stephanie's problems. Hmm. Stephanie's the one who should get counseling from Taylor, not us. Well, well, you may be right. Honey, listen to me. I know you're angry. I know you feel betrayed, okay? So do I. But we can't let this get to us, okay? I can't help it. I can't do this anymore. That lecture from Taylor was the last straw. Now, if she wants me to stop this madness, I will. I will go over to Stephanie's tonight and I will end this nightmare once and for all. Forrester. Oh, Helen, there you are. The caterer called earlier to confirm the time of the party for tomorrow. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, has Brooke called? No. What are you expecting her to? Knowing her, not really. I'm sure she'll drop by unannounced again. Again? She was here? Uh, yes, earlier. Mr. Forrester told me to keep her away from you. It's all right, Helen. It's okay. She didn't upset me. Okay. You know, she's always, always wanted my acceptance. That's nothing new. But somehow, now, she seems so desperate for my approval. I... It's almost as though she's willing to earn it. That kind of worries me, Helen. Worries me a lot. So you're not giving up on Rick? No, I'm not. He just told you he's not going to leave his wife. That's only because I couldn't prove that Amber has been lying. But if I could, he could see her for what she really is. It's 
So this girl, Amber, I mean, do you really think she's uh, some kind of a monster? I mean, do you think she's gonna hurt her own husband? Look at what she has done to him. I mean, she has robbed him of his hopes and in his dreams. What about your dreams, Kimberly? Oh, she won't take my dreams. I'll make sure of that. Maybe she doesn't have to. Maybe you're throwing them away. No, I'm not. My poor Cinderella. Kimberly, can't you see? The, the carriage is waiting. The ball has started. You don't have to stay here and clean up the mess. I don't know what you're talking about. Then let me make myself perfectly clear. <sighs> so Kimberly agreed to back off. She's not going to be sticking her nose in our business anymore. Amber, I told you. It's over. Well, what about your mother? Tell her the same thing I told Kimberly. You're my wife, the mother of my child. And what goes on between us in this family, it's private. Mm. All that stuff about exposing my secret. It was a complete waste of time. And I don't want to hear another word about it. As far as I'm concerned, the subject is closed. Oh, that's great. But what if she won't let it go? You know how she gets. Amber, I don't want you worrying about this anymore. We have much more important things to deal with. We've got a little boy to take care of. Little Eric is depending on us. And, and yes, we may be young and, and inexperienced, but we are the only parents he has, and so we have got to start acting like grown-ups. We can't just freak out every time there's a problem. It's our responsibility. It's our marriage, our family, and we can never let anybody mess with it. Not ever again. Rick, you don't know how long I have waited to hear you say those words. Giovanni, stop. What are you doing? I'm waking you up, Cinderella. I think you got your fairy tales a little confused. I think you're the one who's confused. Kimberly, this, this is your destiny. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Our work together is your destiny. I don't see what that has to do Shh, with anything. Then don't look. Just, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Picture yourself a month from now. We're in Venice. The winter mists are drifting through the piazza. A full moon is casting shadows on the Palazzo Ducale. It is the most magical and romantic night you have ever, ever known. What are you feeling, Kimberly? You will love my country. America is beautiful, but there is no place as romantic as Venice in, in all your 52 states. <sighs> Did I say something amusing? You know, everything about you is amusing, Giovanni. And charming and sweet. So I'm good for you. Yes, yes, you are wonderful. But right now, I need something more than a good laugh. I need to find out what Amber is hiding. Look, I know that I have so much to look forward to. Uh, believe me, I mean, I, I want to enjoy it. I, I do. But I am not going to enjoy anything. Not even Italy. Until I get Amber away from me. Hey. Hey, what's all of this? I, I just can't believe it's finally over. I have been under so much anxiety for so long. Every time 
I thought I had a grasp on it, then something else would happen. You know, I would get in a stupid fight with Kimberly, or my mom would start with me. She would start putting all these stupid ideas in my head, and... <sighs> Where is Tani? I sent her home. Good. Well, like you said, we can't have our parents doing everything for us. But I have been. Every time something came up, I... I just let my mom take care of it. And that was a big mistake, I know that. I'm not gonna let that happen anymore. If I'm gonna depend on anyone, it's going to be you, my husband. The most generous, wonderful man I've ever met in my life. The only one who's never let me down. And I won't. You and little Eric, you're my family. My number one priority. I want you to believe that. I do. I do. Mm. I feel like celebrating. I am so happy and so grateful. I want to make love to you right now. It's been so long. You're still attracted to me, aren't you? Of course I am. Then, what is it? It's not... It, it's a lot of stuff. You know, there's, there's school and, and work. And you've been stressed out and I've been exhausted. And, and there's little Eric and your mom popping in and out. And that's it? No. It was also the first time up at the cabin. You still regret that I got pregnant. It isn't about regret. I mean, I can just, I can just look at little Eric and I can't see living without him. But. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to worry about that. We can't let ourselves get carried away. We have to think about what could happen. Nothing is going to happen. You know that our love life hasn't exactly been steaming lately. But I knew it would, it would warm up eventually. And I wanted to be prepared when it did. You're still taking the pill. Every day. I want to have another baby with you, Rick. But not now. All I want right now is you. I'm through talking. I've got to do whatever it takes to end the standoff with your family. You're not thinking of telling Mother about us. I've been thinking about it. Haven't you? Just imagine, Thorne, being able to open up about a relationship and not have to worry about complications and, and the fear of consequences. I want that more than anything in the world. Honey, honey, so do I, okay? But we have to be patient. We can't say anything until we're sure that Mother is strong enough to deal with it. Well, she's going to have to do more than just deal with it. When I'm finished with her, she's going to have to accept it. When you're finished with her? I have to prove to her that I'm not the enemy. Well, you've already tried that. Well, I guess one pedicure isn't enough. <laughs> so what are you gonna do, give her another one? I'll give her a complete makeover, a massage, a facial, mud bath, the works. You know, maybe Taylor's right. Maybe you are crazy. Hmm. I'm crazy about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be in order to go through all this. Well, it's the only way. Once I gain her friendship, then there'll be nothing that can keep us apart. I love you.
love being a mother, Rick. But that's not all I want to be. I want to be your wife, too. You already are. Not in all the ways I could be. Sure. We share a bed and we share a house and a child. But that's about it. We don't talk or go out. And I can't even remember the last time we held each other. Can you? That's my fault. No, it's not. If anyone's to blame, it's our parents. If we don't share, it's because they never taught us how to. There was no intimacy in our homes growing up. My father ran out on my mother before I was even born, and, and all my mother's boyfriends were creeps. I mean, the most affectionate thing they ever did was leave a half a six-pack in the fridge. Your parents were married, and they probably loved each other, but did you ever see that once? No. We had no one to show us what a good marriage is supposed to look like. It's not going to be that way for little Eric. It can't be. We promised him more. And if we're going to give him more, then we have to give more to each other. We will. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. You've already given me so much already. But you need more. I do. I need you. Mrs. Forrester gave you a pedicure. <laughs> I told you she was desperate. I don't know what to say. I can't imagine her doing something like that. I would never have imagined her doing something like that. But it only proves to me that she's up to something. Like what? Well, I don't know. It could be anything. She's had some upsets with Rick, but... No, it couldn't be him. Who? Mrs. Forrester, what is it? You know, this is just silly. I, I've spent years trying to second guess Brooke, and I'm, I'm just not going to play games anymore. I'm not. But I am going to get to the bottom of this. Mm. You're a one tough lady, Brooke. Hmm, yeah, well, the problem is, so is your mother. Uh, yeah, she's hard as nails, but she has a good heart. Well, hopefully I can get through to it. Forest <laughs> mm. residence. Just a minute. It's for you. It's Brooke. <clears throat> Hello. Stephanie. Hi, it's Brooke. I was wondering if I could come over. Uh, no, that wouldn't be convenient. Well, I think it's very important that we talk. Well, I'd like to talk with you, too, but not now. Could you come over tomorrow morning? Great. I'll be there then. <sighs> Your mother wants to see me. I think she's ready to talk. Mrs. Forrester is coming to the house? Yes, but this time I'll be ready for her. Ready for what? The truth. Brooke doesn't know it yet, but tomorrow she's going to tell me exactly what's going on. <laughs> 